And it is time for my first impression of the Adidas Audi Zero Adios 4. All right, not this is not my full review. Just putting that out there. You, If you are a new subscriber, just so you know, I do the full review after 50 miles. So I did 20 miles today. So in about 30 more miles, I will give you my full review after putting this shoe through some more workouts and paces. Okay, Omori, I'm not saying it correctly, but I'm just gonna say Omori from Japan. He is a shoe designer. He is the, the brainchild behind the design of this shoe. And it's definitely designed for the marathon distance. And as you know, I've said it many times, this shoe, the, the Audios lineup, just go look through some old world records over the past, uh, really the past decade, uh, many marathon world records have been set in this shoe. So it's like the elite, the elite marathon racers, they love this shoe, like they're, they're doing well, they're performing well in this shoe. Okay, let's just jump into a few specs real quick. 23 millimeter stack height in the heel, 13 millimeter stack height in the forefoot. So a 10 millimeter drop. My shoe size is coming in at seven ounces, so 200 grams. I think uh, size nine is about a seven and a half ounces. Uh, so it is, uh, it is lightweight, but it's not the lightest weight marathon racing shoe out there on the market. And from the Audios 3 iteration, so this is the next version, the Audios 4, it did lose a half an ounce. So that's that's always good. You want running shoe companies, they know like we the consumers, we the runners, we the racers, we always are striving to have the lightest, the lightest shoe possible when it comes to race day. All right, let's just throw the price out there right now. Why not? $140. $140. That's not too shabby. Adidas, I give you some kudos on the uh, price point. I'm impressed with $140, I must say. Okay, and as far as the upper and the midsole, guess what? I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to talk. I'll, I'll touch on the fit here in a minute, but we're going to save the upper and the midsole for the full review. I just need a little more time in the shoe to give you my thoughts there. But I do actually want to talk about the outsole. This, look at this outsole pattern. Uh, you'll see the, the boost uh, foam uh, shining through the black rubber. That's right, and you might recognize the name at the top there, Continental. So I'm gonna pull up uh, my phone here and just read you something real quick. Here we go. It, it all began early in 2007 when we met with our counterparts from Adidas at a workshop. Cont that them being Continental. At the time, Adidas was working on a project designed to improve the grip of their shoes. With this aim in mind, uh, Gerd Mons and his colleagues were on the lookout for an expert partner from the rubber industry. Uh, so we made a good match. So that little quote was from an interview between uh, the executives at Adidas and the executives at Continental. I am blown away and so intrigued. I'm gonna read the rest of the article tonight, but basically Adidas has partnered with Continental uh, to create the outsole for this Audios 4 and some of their other shoes as well. Isn't that exciting? Like two huge, you know, million, maybe billion dollar companies are partnering to work together to uh, create a product that we can use as consumers. I just think that's amazing to see that collaboration in the 21st century. And I'm just gonna, so I'm just gonna start with my gut reaction, first impressions right now. The outsole. I tell you what, I felt like I was gripping the pavement really well. And like there's, there's traction and then there's grip. And I don't know all the science behind the rubber and the different types of outsoles, but I will say, I felt like I was put, I was getting some good push off from this uh, Continental rubber outsole. So that is kudos to Adidas and Continental, at least off of my first impressions. And then the next positive on the first run in the Adidas Audi Zero Audios 4, the lockdown. Guys, it was one of the best lockdown feels I have felt in a shoe in a long, long time time through the forefoot and especially through the midfoot the lockdown through this lacing system and again we're not going to dive into the upper right now i here you ready for this i felt like i was in control of the shoe 
and the shoe was not in control of me. Does that make sense? I'm telling you, that was one, I immediately, as as soon as I started running, I was like, oh, I feel locked, really solid locked down into the shoe. So that is a bonus. Moving on to a few drawbacks from the first run. A slight, okay, on both feet, a slight hot spot. So what is a hot spot? A hot spot is when rubbing is happening on your foot and that can lead to a blister. I was feeling a slight hot spot right above my arch, right here on both feet. It didn't turn into a blister, but I could feel it toward the end of the run. I don't think it was the socks, uh, but anyway, just, just putting it out there, I did feel a hot spot above my arch. And then my second and final draw, you know, slight drawback thus far is, you know, I could notice less cushion. And that's, you know, I, I kind of knew that going into when I purchased the shoe. Um, basically that 23 millimeter and 13 millimeter, you know, it's, it's lower on the scale of other marathon racing shoe options out on the market. And if you are a runner, I'll just put it out there right now. If you're a runner who loves ground contact feel in races, who knows? Maybe this is, this might be for you. Uh, okay. So you definitely have a, I felt good ground contact feel, but if you're a runner that loves like a lot of good cushion, if you're like a, a traditional Hoka runner, eh, probably not for you. All right. And I should probably mention that today I did 20 miles in the shoe. Three of those miles was at about 515 per mile pace. And again, if I was focusing on it, I could really focus on a good, uh, toe off and propelling myself forward and I could feel a nice solid grip on the pavement. So that is a bonus uh, so far, so far. Okay, and that keyword is adios. That's right for the adios four. And the question of the day, this is very broad. What questions do you have for me about this shoe? Ask me anything. Keeping in mind, I've only done one run, 20 miles. Uh, and we'll get more miles in them very soon, even though a snowstorm is coming tomorrow, so it won't be tomorrow, but we'll get more miles in these shoes very soon. So ask me anything, and I will. Okay, I'm just gonna put this out there right now. I will be doing a comparison between this shoe and the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit from Nike, this shoe, and uh, probably, I'll probably even do it between uh, the Turbo as well. So if you have that question, just be patient. I'll do a comparison video soon between those two. That's it. Thank you for being here for video number two. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Adios.